Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me for another episode today. We are uh, in the depths of winter here in New England. It's uh, my least favorite month of the year, February. Uh, I've been generally freezing cold outside, although not a bad winter overall. Uh, but it feels like a great time and an appropriate time to look at some hockey cards uh, in this cold weather. So I have a stack today that we're going to go through that features some Wayne Gretzky cards that I have picked up uh, during this NHL season. Uh, continue to buy Wayne Gretzky. He's the greatest of all time. Uh, you know, possibly Alex Ovechkin may pass him for goal scoring. You know, maybe someday Connor McDavid gets there. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, Wayne Gretzky is still the single greatest hockey player ever to lace up skates. Uh, I think he's surprisingly cheap uh, compared to the all-time greats in the other sports like Jordan, Messi, uh, Mantle and Aaron, Babe Ruth, you know, players like that. He is every bit um, the same caliber as those guys within his sport, uh, but he's quite a bit cheaper. And we're going to see evidence of that today. I uh, have some uh, just regular Gretzky cards that I picked up that are going to go into a Z folio that I'm working on. And then I have a couple of graded uh, Wayne Gretzky cards as well uh, for my Gretzky graded collection, which is pretty large in size uh, at this point. And I'm happy with those pickups. So we're going to look at those also. Uh, so I'm going to flip it around here and uh, let's take a look at these great ones. All right, let's take a look at some of these Wayne Gretzky cards that have come in here in the uh, maybe the past two or three months. Um, before we get to those, I have this awesome canvas card up in the background. Uh, was never officially released by Upper Deck. Uh, I think that set was pulled prior to production and got that from someone who got it from the printer in Montreal who had printed the promo uh, sheets for the canvas inserts and just an awesome image there. So we'll throw that guy up in the background and uh, the first card that I have is one that I've actually owned for quite a while. Uh, the rest of these are going to be new pickups, but recently pulled this out. I was having a conversation with a couple of hobby buddies about uh, great appearances of Gretzky in the Team Canada uniform uh, on cardboard and immediately thought of this one uh, from the SP Authentic, Authentic Moments uh, subset, which has been just a gold mine for great photos over the years. And of course, this one also features Mario Lemieux. Uh, opposite Gretzky on the other side of the goal there. So pretty cool image on that one. Uh, rest of these are new pickups. So um, in 1999, Gretzky retired at the end of the 98-99 season. And so, of course, you know, being probably the best player ever to play, Upper Deck made a pretty big deal out of that retirement and issued a whole lot of Gretzky tribute cards uh, the following season, things like that. Uh, one of those was a nine-card set, um, which I think was called, like, just the great one or something like that, or performance, uh, something along those lines, but um, picked up the entire nine card set on eBay. And this is gonna look beautiful in the Gretzky Z folio. So check out these wild borders. They have almost this like animal print pattern that almost looks like a leopard print type pattern, but it's done in like a crazy rainbow foil. And then there's an inset photo in the middle. So these photos kind of span his career. Uh, Rangers here as the uh, team that he wound it down with, so I think that's why they're in the number one spot. Got the Oilers, great shot there. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot to these. Uh, they all look kind of identical other than the photo. They use the same photo on the front and back, but I really just picked these up just purely based on the shine factor and, you know, the, the reasoning that these are going to look pretty darn nice in a Z folio all laid out. Here's a nice goal celebration shot with the Kings. Got the old Gatorade bottle on top of the net there. Love that. Another nice uh, Oilers shot there. And I mean, video is kind of doing these justice, but I have to say in hand, they actually look even a degree better than what you're seeing here. Got the, uh, of course, the St. Louis Blues, who he spent an entire uh, 18 games with. Another nice, uh, oh, this is an all-star game shot, actually, for the Western Conference. And uh, we close it out with another... Rangers cards. So these are just numbered GO one through nine for a great one, one through nine and uh, picked up, you know, with a little bit of patience, you can, you can find these at decent prices, even 20 to 25 years later, uh, picked up this entire nine card set for under $20 shipped. So pretty pleased with that. And then there were also like some inserts or smaller sets that came out related to that, uh, that same release. And I have a six card one that I got from a different seller. Uh, let me just unwrap this. And these were known as, I think, a leader by example was the name of the subset. 
but as you'll see, um, it features a very similar effect to the ones we just looked at. We got a nice team. Uh, what drew me to these was the Team Canada card, and I, I nearly purchased a couple of these on Com C for like three dollars each. And then I realized I could get the entire six card set uh, for around twelve bucks. So I'd rather have the set. There's another uh, Eastern Conference All Star this time. Uh, check out this crazy uh, alternate or third jersey for the Kings. I do not remember that at all with the bearded king in the upper corner. Um, great Oilers card here. And then another Rangers to close it out. And you can see the difference here. It says a leader by example uh, along the left border and center of the card. So those six will go in the Z. I'll probably do one, you know, back-to-back -back open page that has that nine card set and then the uh, smaller six card set you know, adjacent to it. I think those will look really, really nice. Um, aside from that, I have three graded cards to look at. I'm always on the lookout for Gretzky slabs as well. Um, this one is sort of late. This first one in the era of like classic Tops and Opeachy cardboard sets. Um, very similar to baseball in the early 90s. The brands kind of transitioned away from this old fashioned um, cardboard stock that we all kind of knew and grew up with in, in this classic type set. So this is one of the final ones, uh, I would say, especially on the baseball side, 91 Tops was kind of the final set. Um, in hockey, they had sort of transitioned, you know, this would have been the fall of 91, whereas baseball came out in the spring, uh, to where the front, you know, still has that same cardstock feel. The back is maybe closer to the stock used on 92 Tops baseball. Um, so it's sort of like an interesting midway point between 91 and 92 Tops baseball with 91 Tops Hockey, uh, found this Gretzky for my run. I am trying to work on a playing era run of his graded Tops and Opeachy cards. And uh, these early 90s ones are harder to find than you think. I don't think because they're tough to grade. I just think it's because not a lot of people are submitting them yet for grading. Uh, for a very long time, hockey card collecting really wasn't popular at all. Um, I do think that started to change, but I think it's going to take some time uh, for things to catch up. And so I'm only just now starting to see kind of uh, some quantity of these types of slabs uh, hit the market, and I snatched that one up, I think, for around 25 bucks. Um, going back one year from that, um, from the 90 Opeachy release, found this box bottom, uh, which is, you know, same concept as uh, you're familiar with from baseball. I'm, I'm just a total sucker for these. Anything that gets kind of hand cut with scissors out of a box, I love the oddness of that, and I guess kind of the scarcity of it compared to, you know, the cards that were in the box. Um, pretty tough to find these in a high grade. I don't really care about that, um, but a lot of times because they're hand cut, they'll just grade out as like authentic um, if they're not cut, you know, to the exact specifications of a, a trading card, um, or they'll have a very low grade because of just wear um, on the bottom of the box as it slid around in a case or on a hobby shop shelf. Um, so to find this in a PSA 9, I thought was uh, pretty amazing, actually. Um, and this this came in at under $40. Really stunned by that, uh, but happy to add that to the Gretzky collection. I think I had an ungraded copy of that prior. And then uh, probably my favorite card that I'll show today overall, uh, my favorite hockey design from the 1980s. I think it's a really important set for that reason. The 84-85 Tops and Opeachy release, in this case Tops. Here's the great one, card number 51. And uh, fantastic shot here. This sort of has... Um, um, I guess draws to or draws parallels to 83 Tops Baseball uh, with that kind of inset portrait photo, larger action photo behind it, even sort of like the piping that's used around the, the border of the card. Um, so in the same vein and in the same way that I hear a lot of folks reference uh, 1983 Tops Baseball as a favorite design of theirs from the decade, this set is commonly referred to as a favorite uh, or picked as a favorite by collectors. Uh, design-wise for the 1980s for hockey. Uh, it does have the Steve Eiserman rookie uh, in the set. He's really the biggest rookie, but um, really nice Gretzky card here. I love the aesthetics of this one. I love the cropping of the photo. And I think just like with baseball cards from Tops from the early to mid 80s um, with this tougher card stock, I think high grade examples of these like nines um, are gonna become tougher and tougher I just think a lot of these probably didn't grade a nine even right out of the pack. The corners are very sensitive. Centering was a problem on a lot of these. And when I saw this particular, this exact card hit eBay, I like fell in love with it. Um, I already own this card 
in a PSA 9. Um, I should have dragged it out for this video, but I don't like the copy that I have currently anywhere near as much as I do this one. Uh, this looks like perfect to me. Um, it's in a newer flip with the hologram label on it, which is not the case for the one I had. So I upgraded and picked this up. This was available for $99, fittingly. Uh, the seller offered a $10 off bonus, uh, which brought it under 90. And then I had about $10 in eBay bucks uh, to throw at this as well. So um, my out-of-pocket cost was uh, under $80 uh, for this card in a PSA 9. I just um, couldn't pass it up at that price. I think it's gorgeous. And it's a Gretzky that I'm very, very happy to have in my collection of the man. So that is a wrap for today's video. Uh, just kind of a smattering of Wayne Gretzky cards. Really appreciate you tuning in for these. And I will certainly be back in the very near future with some more content. Till then, take care, everybody.